Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you listening right now, Philip Less. Hi, how are you, Howard Yermish? John Atwood, you doing okay? We should all welcome in our new patrons, David and Ray Davila. Welcome. Yay. Welcome. In. Welcome. On this episode of DTNS, NVIDIA is on top of the world, announcing new AI processors, a new AI platform, getting compared to Taylor Swift, and Facebook has lowered the price EU users would need to pay to avoid ads. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, March 19th, 2024. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. You know, I'd say nine days out of 10, I read in Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. And I think to myself, well, what are you when you're not in Los Angeles? You're still Tom Merritt? Yeah, the answer is I'm still Tom Merritt. Yeah. And I still think weird <laughs> For things. better or worse, <laughs> yeah. you know, you kind of just have to, it's your cross to bear. Happy NVIDIA Day, everyone. Oh, happy NVIDIA Day to you. It's NVIDIA's it, it, coming it, out party. It was a, it was, and it was a big one. Yeah, it, it's like it a quinceanera. A, I don't know if they're 16. They're more than 16 years old as a company. NVIDIA, but. are you wearing a cool dress right now? You look great, NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. Well done. Thanks yeah. for inviting all your friends. All right, let's start with the quick hits. Google's Liz Reed has been in charge of adding AI tools into search, aka the search generative experience, and has just been promoted to running all of search. Congrats, Liz. Certainly looks like a sign that Google sees its search future as firmly powered by Gemini and the like. Microsoft is shaking up the people running some of its AI products. The co-founder of Google's DeepMind, Mustafa Suleiman, has been named executive vice president and CEO of Microsoft AI, which is a new group within the company that includes Copilot, as well as bringing Bing and Edge into the department. Uh, Suleiman left DeepMind in 2022 to found a company called Inflection AI. And fellow Inflection AI co-founder and chief scientist Karen Simonyan will also join Microsoft and become the chief scientist of Microsoft AI. The person who was in charge of Bing and Edge, Mikhail Parakin, CEO of Advertising and Web Services, is moving over to this new group as well. Inflection AI will continue to exist and will host its 2.5 model on Microsoft Azure. So I guess no hard feelings. Huh? Commercial Bank of Ethiopia, Ethiopia's largest bank, suffered a systems glitch over the weekend, which let customers withdraw more cash from their accounts than they had in their accounts. Yes, but only temporarily. <laughs> Much of the $40 million withdrawn was done so by students on campus ATMs once mm. word about the glitch spread via messaging apps. At least three universities have now released statements advising students to return that money that you took that wasn't your own. They might have taken from CBE. Anyone returning money will not be charged with a criminal offense. I mean, how would you get charged with a criminal offense when it's like their glitch, but knowingly keeping it, I could I could see you get in charge. Yeah. Uh, you may remember us mentioning the Pixis Ocean shipping vessel a while ago, P-Y-X-I-S. Uh, to jog your memory, it was using 123-foot-tall wings uh, kind of standing upright on the deck of the boat to harness wind power to generate energy for ship propulsion. So not exactly sailing, although that's the obvious joke, but, but yeah, using wind power to power the boat. After six months of testing this, the results are in, and shipping company Cargill says the Pixis Ocean saved an average of 3.3 tons of fuel each day, which tells you how much how many tons of fuel these ships have to carry around, peaking at 12 tons of fuel saved each day under optimal weather conditions, right? When the when the wind was blown in the right direction and all that. Greenhouse gas emissions therefore fell 14%. The test vessel was using two of these wings, but they say they could probably fit most ships with three, so that would increase all those numbers. The next challenge is getting ports to be able to accommodate the unusually tall wings. Now, that may seem weird because you're like, well, they're up in the air. What does the port matter? You just pull into the dock. There's things like clearances and bridges and stuff like that they have to deal with as well. So uh, it look, But looks promising that these would help improve the efficiency of shipping. Tom, remember when you used to poke someone on Facebook or get poked by somebody on Facebook? It was to try to interact with somebody, you know? You're ignoring me. Uh, mm -hmm. I miss you. 
uh, be my friend, all sorts of reasons. Well, the company announced Tuesday, and this is not a joke, that not only is the poking feature not actually dead, just mostly <laughs> dead, but recently improved suggestions on who to poke and how to find the poking page through search is one of the mandates. Facebook says three the, these small changes have led to a 13x spike in poking in the past month. I'm sorry, I can't say this with a straight face. <laughs> it's true, though. Young users, though, and this is interesting, on board Facebook reports that more than 50% of recent pokes are coming from those aged 18 to 29. Ah, so... No, I'm not going to say that. Um, the young kids are enjoying this feature, this old feature. It's like of 90s Facebook. nostalgia. Yeah. Well, early aughts, I, I suppose. I was in, only in sad the sense of Facebook. that this wasn't about poke, the delicious <laughs> Hawaiian food. Which not, has never fallen out of favor. No, absolutely. <laughs> and, and Facebook should, should you know, increase the amount of poke, uh, poke bowls in the world, too. Indeed. At the end of it. Well, um, going into more meta news, in order to comply with the EU's Digital Markets Act, or DMA, which we've talked about quite a bit here on DTNS, Meta offered EU users the option to pay uh, 9.99 euros per month for an ad-free experience. Now, this complied with the provisions that users have to be offered a way to use a product without being tracked. So Meta said, okay, well, we've got the free option, you're getting tracked, or you pay and you don't get tracked. But some people objected, saying a paid option doesn't count as allowing customers to give free informed consent. At a workshop in Brussels, Meta lawyer Tim Lamb revealed that Meta will reduce the fee down to 5.99 euros per month and 4 euros for additional accounts. The company is waiting to hear from the Irish Data Protection Commission to get a response if that lower price indeed addresses the concerns. Yeah, so Meta's argument is, well, if we can't track users, uh, and again, it's not like you can't serve ads to users if you can't track them uh, directly, but if, if you can't track them directly, uh, they can't make enough money. They can make some money, but they can't make enough money to justify offering the service. Uh, it's a business decision that, you know, if if we could only make the amount of money you can make without tracking, we wouldn't be offering this service. So if the only option it can offer that makes business sense are pay us the fee that would cover what we're not going to get from from advertising and we won't give you any advertising, we won't track you at all or let us track you and then it's worth doing. Max Schrems has been leading the charge for privacy in the EU for more than a decade now uh, and is one of the people trying to hold tech companies accountable, is out there talking to the press and says, look, even at a price of a euro 99, which begs the question, what about 99 cents? But he says, even at a price of a euro 99 in studies, that has changed consent to be tracked from three to 10 percent. So if it's like, do you consent to be tracked? There's no cost to it. Three to 10% say yes. Everybody else says no. But if they're like, hey, do you consent to be tracked? You'll be charged a dollar ninety nine or a euro ninety nine. Suddenly 99.9% .9 people say, no, I fine, track me. I don't want to pay for it. So Shrem's argument mm. is that charging money, even as low as a euro ninety nine, is effectively economic coercion. And that violates the rules that say you have to ha be able to give free consents. Uh, hence it fails the standard. Uh Sarah. Which side are you on? We're at war. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, okay. So as a Facebook user who doesn't pay anything, and I don't live in the EU, so um, this, is, this does not apply directly to me, um, <laughs> I, I have to just yeah, preface this whole um, uh, conversation with there have been Facebook, you know, like dumb spam rumors uh, for years about like the company's going to start charging you. Um, so that is actually kind of true, depending on the region that you live in. But it means that you might have an experience that you value more um, or makes you feel safer than the one that you have for free. So would I do this for even one dollar ninety nine euro per month? No, I would not. I would not. I think um, that it's, you know, somewhat negligible for a lot of people who, you know, are paying for five euro coffees kind of thing. So, so, okay. The, um, the amount 
um, that is, uh, the, you know, that we're talking about right now, which is six euros per month is, you know, it's doable. Do you want that kind of experience? Great. What I think is really interesting though, is, is what you talked about, Tom, um, the idea that if it went down to a certain number, people go, Hmm, okay. All right. I feel a little bit differently about that. And that's just kind of economics. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I don't think that, <laughs> I don't think meta, I, I think the whole, th this is sort of like a furniture store, right? It's like, you want this couch? Nah, too expensive. Well, okay. Let me go in the back and talk to my supervisor, come back outside <laughs> and be like, what if the couch was like 50% of that price? And people go, maybe I want it after all. This feels like sort of more of the same. Yeah, it's I mean, clearly it's a negotiation of like nine ninety nine, that was too much. What about five ninety nine? What if we charge people five ninety nine? What do you think, Irish Data Protection Commission? And yeah. is that good enough? Uh and and then the you know you you'd be right in saying well then why did you charge nine ninety nine before where you know you were just you were just being greedy and to that I would say yes if you are running a business of any kind let's say you're running a garage sale you you're try going to, to charge try... what you can charge yes and yeah you might give someone a little bit of a discount because you you're like you know what you have an, a kind face I want you to have something but in general you're <laughs> trying to make money that's all these companies are doing uh, and. I think it's fair to say you don't have to use Facebook. So if we're not allowed to make our maximum amount of money on advertising, then we're going to charge that if they, if, what if they didn't give any kind of free access and just charged, that would be fine. Right. It's, well, and it's also the like, what they're if they're offering an access yeah. that's tracked, that seems to be the problem. I mean, and I'm not minimizing people who do business on Facebook because I know there are a lot of you who do. But, you know, if my bank said, oh, your $4 monthly fee is now $14, like I would be up in arms. Um, you know, there there are certain uh, apps that I, I feel like I have to use as a person, uh, you know, just <laughs> making our way in the world. But Facebook is not one of those. But... I think some people feel like, well, this actually is kind of where I hang out, where I might do business, where I might make money. Um, and, and yeah, the, you know, the, the, that makes these numbers actually really relevant. Yeah. And, and Stoic Squirrel says, you know, if they gave it away, uh, if they charged everyone, they'd have fewer users. And that's absolutely true. Uh, at which point I say, well, what they're trying to do is have a free version that's ad supported. Uh, if you say you can't, it is illegal for you to track people. Uh, and they know that even with, cons you know, they won't get enough consent for free. Uh, then maybe they would have a different time period. Like it would be free for a limited period of time or with limited features. But at that point, just make tracking illegal. If you don't want people to be tracked at all, just make it illegal. Like to, to me, this is, it, it's sort of like saying what we really want is Facebook not to track anyone. And it's like, all right, well then just say that. Just, just, just make that the the law. Uh, if you have feedback about why I'm entirely wrong about that, why not let me know on our social media DTNS show on X, uh, Mastodon at uh, DTNS show at mstdn.social, Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, and DTNS Picks DTNS P I X on Instagram and on Threads. Say hi. At an event, compared to rock concerts by not one person, but quite a few, a few of them even brought up Taylor Swift as an example. NVIDIA, yes, that is the comparison, held its GTC developer conference. As it continues to roll tide on the stock market charts and sell hardware in large amounts to companies making AI products, NVIDIA seems to be taking the mantle from... Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, NVIDIA is big. It's, you know, maybe not even part of the big five, but bigger. So, yeah. Tom, let's break down what they announced today. Yeah, you might say they have champagne problems. Mm. You know. 
Uh, the star of the show at this announcement is the Next Generation Processors. The Next Generation is named Blackwell after the mathematician David Harold Blackwell, who specialized in game theory and statistics, kind of the underpinnings of AI. Uh, the Blackwell line is the successor to the Hopper series. Hopper named after Admiral Grace Hopper. Uh, and the Hopper flagship you've probably heard bandied about in the headlines as the H100 processor. The first Blackwell processor is going to be called called the GB200. It will be made for NVIDIA by TSMC, who makes all the big stuff. And it's actually a combination. It's two chip dies, two B200 Blackwell GPUs uh, combined that communicate at up to 10 terabytes per second and includes an ARM-based Grace CPU. This thing can do 20 petaflops. That's up from four in the H100. It is 7 to 30 times faster than the H100 and uses 25 times less power. There are 208 billion transistors in Blackwell chips. And the only reason I bring that up is so I can compare it to the H100, which has 80 billion transistors. So it's bigger, it's more powerful, it's more power efficient. And it has its own transformer engine that is specifically meant for transformer models, GPT models, not just the OpenAI GPT model. Uh, they claim they can deploy a 27 trillion parameters model. And as a comparison, GPT-4, which is one of the highest parameter models out there, has 1.7 trillion parameters. So there's room to grow. Uh, the GB200 NVLink2 server will combine 72 Blackwell GPUs and is designed to train models. AWS, Google, Azure, and Oracle will be offering the GB200 in their cloud services. The chips will be shipping later this year. Uh, this is a big one, Sarah. It's a big one. Um, I think what's also big is how much it costs. You know, if you're a corporation, like, you know, if you're AWS, do you buy a thousand or a million, you know, and get some sort of discount? Like, what are we talking here? Because obviously the specs are really... Um, I mean, they're great uh, compared to, you know, anything H100-esque. Yeah, and uh, this this is what you would expect. It's probably a bigger jump than you would expect. And if you're like, okay, that's a lot of numbers, and I'm not going to buy one of these things because they're probably $10,000, which, you know, maybe on, on the low side. Uh, what are they good for? They are good for companies renting them essentially as some mm -hmm. companies may buy them and roll them into their own data centers but most companies are going to rent them from aws google azure and oracle uh and and they're going to use them to train or more likely inference uh their own models so yeah, it is uh -huh. a more powerful faster way of but providing don't, the models but that don't you, have. you need the gpu if you if you train a model successfully don't you still need that processing power going forward you know, um, like, yeah. is it like a lifetime rental type thing? Well, it's, it's, it's like a cloud rental. It's like paying for your yeah. ISP, right? You're, you're going to rent from, let's say Azure. Uh, like I want to, right. I, like I want to use this much, rental. this much, uh, GPU power per month. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and then you, you pay per month to access that. You can also buy the stuff and use it on your own premises. Uh, but then you have to maintain it and, and you have to replace it when it gets out of date and all of that. So this, this is going to, supercharge the training of models. And, and by the way, in the press release for this thing, everyone recommended it. Satya Nadella, Al Alt Sam Altman, uh, Sundar Pichai, I, everybody who's in this space. They were <laughs> right. all like, yes, yeah. we love the NVIDIA GPU. The heads of all the companies that care about AI. Well, yeah. so once you do have that more powerful GPU, whether you buy it or you rent it. NVIDIA wants to make it easy for you to deploy AI without needing to spend weeks on the code or even have expert AI folks in-house. Maybe you don't have any. You might not need it, says NVIDIA. Hence, the NVIDIA Inference Microservice, or NIM, coming to the NVIDIA Enterprise software subscription. So this is going to let companies who have their own trained models save money by using their existing older NVIDIA GPUs for inferencing, which is less intensive than training. That way, 
They don't need to buy new expensive hardware or outsource to cloud providers. I mean, that that is the ideal situation anyway. NIM combines your model with an optimized inferencing engine in a container available as a microservice you can call on. So if you're not a developer, that means weeks to months of work available immediately. NVIDIA says NIM can run on a laptop with the proper GPU, which yeah. uh, they conveniently provide. And we, we don't have prices on the Blackwell processors, but we know that the Hopper ones were, you know, ten twenty five thousand uh, dollars $25,000. The license for this NIM software is $4,500 per GPU per year that you're running it on, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you have uh, an in-house set of GPUs, maybe you have hoppers, maybe even have some older ones, you can use NIM to get more out of them and, and improve the performance. Uh, it'll support all kinds of, of models, uh, Hugging Face, Google, Getty Images, Shutterstock, a bunch of stuff. And you're going to be able to rent it as well. If you're like, I, I, I want to be able to use this, but I actually need to use it in the cloud. Amazon, Google, and Microsoft are all going to offer NIM because it's a container that you can just call on. So if you're like, you know what, I don't have old old computer hardware, but I don't also have AI developers. I need to be able to call on a container that can save me weeks and months of work. You can do that. You can do that through the cloud as, as well. This thing will be able to do speech, translation, routing optimizations, weather modeling, the Earth 2. We're going to talk about that in a little bit is available through NIM. And they're going to keep adding stuff to it. They say they're going to add chatbots to it as well. I mean, it's impressive. It, uh, you know, $4,500 per GPU uh, per year uh, for a license. Um, there are certainly, you know, really small companies who would be like, ooh, can't do it. Um, but uh, companies who are really taking this stuff seriously and need this kind of processing power, this feels affordable to me. Yeah, if you're going to make that money back, which is, that's the calculation, right? Is like, I'm going yeah, to Yeah, I mean, why else would you even bother? I'm going to have a speech and translation model that's going to increase my business by, you know, $4,500, you know, by $9,000 uh, per per year. I, I mean, you should be able to increase it by quite a bit more, $4,500 per year, not per month. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. doable for a lot of businesses. So this, this is also significant because it's NVIDIA pivoting to enterprise software. That was one of the things Jensen Huang kept uh, hammering in this announcement was NVIDIA isn't just a hardware company anymore. They're a software company. They're trying to do what Microsoft did with Windows when it pivoted to cloud and Azure from GPUs to enterprise AI services. Mm -hmm. Not trying to replace OpenAI, not trying to re replace Anthropic or Hugging Face, but being the software platform that those models can run on. Uh, and I think that's incredibly smart because NVIDIA is doing that at a time where there aren't that many other games in town uh, to compete with them. And they're not trying to compete with the established players like Microsoft and Amazon. They're, they're signing them up as clients. Well, and I think I was listening to a, um, it was a, a public radio uh, something or other uh, yesterday evening when I was in my car and it, there was an NVIDIA story, again, ahead of the announcements today. But but the whole kind of thing was, this was for a general audience, like what's a GPU, NVIDIA. But, you know, it got me thinking, I think a lot of people still think like, oh, NVIDIA, that's like a gaming processor company. You know, it's for somebody who wants to build their own PC. Not untrue, but also NVIDIA is has made moves that um, it's going to be a part of your technological experience in a variety of ways um, that, you know, either it already is or will be in the future uh, because of all this stuff. Yeah. And, and the other thing to, to remember is uh, NVIDIA makes money. This is not a startup that's, you know, trying to get listed on the stock no, exchange and, you know, we're going to lose money for a few more years before we make it. No, and, and NVIDIA prints, prints cash. Uh, and so getting into this AI space, they're doing it because they make money selling this stuff and they make money selling this stuff because there's a demand for it because it works. There's a lot of hype around AI and I don't deny that, but there's also a lot of things that actually work. The other thing that Jensen Huang is doing here, which I think is also very interesting, is he's looking ahead of even the software of like, okay, we'll be the, the software provider for something like NIM. What else should we be positioning ourselves to provide? And that's where Project Groot 
or actually I should probably say Project GR00T, because it's spelled with zeros, a general purpose foundation model for humanoid robots was announced. Uh, NVIDIA says this will make it easier for humanoid robots to take actions based on inputs with a combination of language, video, human demonstrations, and past experiences. So again, a platform it can offer, this time to a very specific industry, robotics. Uh, mm -hmm. NVIDIA also announced Isaac Manipulator and Isaac Perceptor for use by companies that make robotic arms in the manipulator case and autonomous mobile robots in the Perceptor case. Project Groot runs on a computer called the Jetson Thor. They really love their Marvel illusions, which is optimized to run simulation workflows. So a lot of times when you're training these robots, uh, you will simulate what they do as a way to speed up training. And that's what uh, the Jetson Thor hardware is designed to do. Jetson Thor uses Blackwell architecture with a transformer engine that delivers 800 teraflops of 8-bit floating point AI. Well, uh, all right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it, and, and if you're like, so, some great, of this, who's going to buy like, this? You everybody, know, it, everybody that's in this business, like probably the one people have heard about the most is Boston Dynamics, but there's a dozen right, other robotics yeah. companies here that are taking advantage of this. Well, I mean, the Amazon, a company, you know, go, going pretty hard on robotics as well. Um, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. I don't know if they're a client though. Tesla is not a client either, but. Agility, Boston Dynamics, Xpeng, all of those. Yeah, no, yeah. no. I I mentioned Amazon just as a company who's you know leaning into the humanoid robot thing, you know, to kind of see what sticks. Are we're still one? in those early days. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, for yeah. warehouses, um, mm. we're still yeah, we're in those early days. I don't know, man. I mean, Nvidia has been busy as all heck, and um, I. I don't know. I, I, the whole sort of like robots that do things that might, you know, you know, become, um, uh, you know, adversaries to humans. I'm not really worried about that. Uh, you know, let's let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Nvidia, and, I'm in. And this follows this follows the pattern that we're noticing at this announcement of. Yes, we're still a GPU company and we're mostly an AI hardware company. Uh, so we're going to announce that is our big showpiece. But here's what we're looking forward to. We're going to pivot and provide more enterprise software in the AI space. We're going to provide software for a growing industry uh, like robotics. And they're even going to jump ahead and, and try to provide some stuff that's got an even longer timeline, right? Yeah. Um, if you were like, well, that seemed like a big announcement today. NVIDIA is not done yet. A couple other announcements worth noting. NVIDIA's Earth 2 is a digital twin of our planet you can use for climate tracking. It can run on different supercomputers and is claimed to be 1,000 times faster and 2,000 times more energy efficient than today's numerical weather prediction processes. It can also deliver real-time forecasts, warnings in seconds. You know, if you live in earthquake country, as... So some of us on the show do. Kind of cool. Taiwan's Central Weather Administration is among the first to adopt it for typhoon forecasting as well. So there are a lot of climate things that it is designed to take care of, or at least alert you of. The weather company plans to leverage Earth 2's APIs. And probably the longest timeline that NVIDIA is getting into is Quantum Cloud. NVIDIA Quantum Cloud is a data center stacked with AI chips and systems that simulate a quantum computer for research. So they're not providing a quantum computer, mm. but they're getting themselves ready to do that. NVIDIA says the service will provide access to third-party quantum computers in the future. In related supercomputer news, Fujitsu will use 2,000 Hopper H100 GPUs in its supercomputer that it's building for quantum computing research at Japan's National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology. And supercomputers at Denmark's Novo Nordisk Foundation and Australia's POSI Supercomputing Research Center will also use NVIDIA GPUs. So... NVIDIA really at the top of its game. Like it, it feels like uh, this is the apex of its climb. It, it is, it has graduated to top tier status. So when you talk about Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, you got to talk about NVIDIA now too. Well, and you know, NVIDIA has, it's one of those companies where, and there are many companies where it's sort of like behind the scenes, you know, this is what powers the thing that you love. 
Um, and NVIDIA has been doing that for a long time, but we're getting to the point where uh, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a real superstar of its own. Company yeah, wise. and this and this was its coming out party. Roger reminded me earlier today that uh, it's it's been five years since they had a GTC, so that kind of fueled the excitement. Uh, yeah. But their their stock price also probably fueled the excitement. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. Congrats to all of you who made money. <laughs> Let's check out the mailbag. Well, if you're tired of lugging your bags everywhere when you travel because you need bags and you know that's not very fun, Chris Christensen found luggage that might be able to move itself and you along with it. This is Chris Christensen from Amateur Traveler with another Tech in Travel Minute. I was at the Travel Goods Association show last week, seeing all sorts of new different devices, gadgets, and lots and lots of luggage that are coming out. And one of the most interesting pieces of luggage that has a high-tech angle is the Moto Bag. And this is a bag that has a motor in it. It is self-propelled. It is a carry-on that can carry you. It's fascinating. It is the size of a carry-on, but it is self-propelled, and you can ride on it. And you can see a video of this on my Instagram, which is Chris2x, but it's a fascinating different bag. The idea is that it would give mobility for people who may not be able to make the long walks through airports, but you can check it out. It's Moto Bag, and this is Chris Christensen from Amateur Traveler. I, uh, I, I've i seen uh, members of Blackpink writing similar. I don't know if they're moto bags, but they're similar things uh, around in their vlogs. So, you know, this is the future. We'll be riding our suitcases in the airport. I mean, I, 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 I'm I still, you know, I'm still rocking the, you know, get my steps in type thing. But hey, you know, at the end of a long day after maybe. Once you many- hit the step count. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Then, then I am Hop chilling on, on the carry on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You've taken that long walk through Heathrow or, or JFK. Uh, <laughs> you know, reward yourself by riding Indeed. your bag. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, patrons, stick around for the extended show. Good day, Internet. Uh, generated images are spamming Facebook. You may have seen some of these, uh, perhaps a very holy looking shrimp. Uh, and they are leading people to realize, huh? There are bots in this world, which is probably a good thing. I don't know. We're going to discuss it. Stick around. You can catch this show at live Monday through Friday when we do it live at 4 p.m. Eastern, 20 hundred UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We've got somebody pretty cool coming to the show tomorrow. That is Patrick Beja. We've missed him. Don't miss tomorrow's show. The DTNS family of podcasts helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>